Touching down at O'Hakia today is the first York transport plane to land in New Zealand. It brings Field Marshal Lord Allenbrook, Chief of the Imperial General Staff. Lord Allenbrook, formerly Sir Allenbrook of Dunkirk, is the first British Chief of Staff to visit New Zealand while holding office. To meet him is Sir Patrick Duff, British High Commissioner. In the last 30 days, Lord Allenbrook has visited Italy, Greece, India, Burma, Hong Kong, Japan, Philippines and Australia. The swiftness of his tour is a foretaste of world travel in an aeroplane nation. Today is the 10th anniversary of the first Labour government in New Zealand. To celebrate their party's 10 years in office, several thousand members of the Labour Party marched through the streets of Wellington to Parliament buildings. During their party's 10 years of government, New Zealand has fought in the greatest war in history and helped to win it. Pride in the achievements of their party is expressed on the banners of the procession, points of progress in their legislation. In the grounds of Parliament buildings, the procession is received by the Prime Minister and members of the Cabinet. Said Mr Fraser, war came in the midst of our programme, but during the war we did succeed in maintaining, even advancing, the social and economic position of our people. Now we are once more extending that programme. Farm horses of the Fielding District are lined up before the judge for the Young Farmers Club show. This one day show is an ambitious project for the Fielding Young Farmers, but with 500 entries it's a definite success. Dull weather has not made any difference, for besides interest in stock, the show provides a good opportunity for a farming get-together. Bringing young farmers together is the main object of Young Farmers Clubs. Children have a good day too. Live ponies are more interesting than merry-go-round horses. But for the children, today's big event is the Calf Club judging. For the last three weeks, judges have been visiting all the country schools between the Rangatiki and Manawatu rivers, picking out the best calves from each school's calf club. Now, out of the 800 entries, 67 finalists are here for the championship judging. These calves are being judged for care in rearing. Learning how to rear their calves is the most important thing the children learn through their calf clubs. It's the first step towards becoming good farmers. With pride and self-assurance, the juniors, that is the primers and standards one and two, lead in their calves. These youngsters will never know what it is to be frightened of a cow. And then the young farmers lead in the air shows for the grand parade. For membership purposes, a young farmer is any person under 30 who earns his living on the land. For a one-day show, they turn on an impressive grand parade. In show organization, they have little to learn. Activities like this show mean a lot to young farmers. It not only gives them a chance to look over good stock and to swap farm information, but it's a pleasant social occasion that offsets some of the isolation and loneliness of farming. On Seatoon Heights, overlooking Wellington's harbour, is a garden of trees and shrubs and flowers. This is the garden of Elizabeth Matheson, a potter whose work is known all over New Zealand. At the end of the garden is her studio, where she turns clay from the earth into beauty for the home.
This is dry clay. It may have come from Timuka, Kaitoki, or from Oriental Bay. To the potter, clay from different places has different qualities, but it all looks alike to us, no matter what shape it has taken. From the dry state, it starts on a long process before it's ready for use. First, it's ground back to dust. This is mixed with water and left to stand until the surplus water evaporates. Then it's ready for working. Working the clay like this takes time. Still, this is a pleasant place to work. The Chinese Mandarin looking on knows all about it. He started as a piece of clay himself. When the clay is ready, and only the potter knows that, real work on the potter's wheel begins. It looks so easy. The speed of the wheel, the position of the hands, the strength of the fingers, the moisture in the clay, the clay itself, are all factors that can make or mar the finished article. In this case, a vase. The first stage of drawing a cylinder is finished. Now shaping begins. Miss Matheson says she's self-taught and unorthodox in her methods. A mirror helps her to get an all-round view of the shape as it forms. The vase is finished. At least it will be in a few more days and after a lot more work. It's left to dry and then fired in a kill for the first time. Then comes glazing. A solution of clay and chemicals is applied before a second firing. Into the kiln now for 48 hours at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Only our friend knows what that's like. And here are finished pieces, glazed green and blue and brown. The work of Elizabeth Matheson is just a sample of a skill that others too are developing in New Zealand.